Up until now, my arms and armor reviews have been almost wholly focused on reproduction swords. And these are swords that, while they are functional, have a heavy emphasis on aesthetics, mostly for the purposes of collectability. But today we're going to take a look at a sword that has a much larger focus on pure functionality. And that sword is made by renowned Hungarian swordsmith Peter Regnier. So here it is, Peter Regnier's standard fader sword. A fader, or fader schwert, is a type of training sword intended for the most part to be non-lethal and used in tournaments or practice. Faders can be traced back to the 15th century and are featured prominently in many fight books, such as those written by Joachim Meyer. The sword consists of a very thin, rounded blade with a very large ricasso and heavy hilt and pommel. Because of this, it has nearly the same weight and center of balance as a real sword and handles more or less identically. The tips of historical faders were blunted and may have been wrapped in leather to provide a safe thrusting tip. The fader has seen a modern comeback as interest in historical European martial arts, or HEMA, has grown and become more prominent. Here are the specifications of the Reginier standard fader. The main thing to note is that the point of balance is right where it should be, about 8 centimeters from the cross guard. Now normally when you're talking about uh, a sword that you're going to actively use and really beat up, uh, aesthetics aren't going to be the most important thing, and they certainly aren't for this sword, but there are a few things I would like to note. One is there are many different options for the shilt on, on a uh, fader, and that is this flared portion of the Ricasso. Um, this one is actually called a crown shilt because of how it comes a little bit to a point and then kind of curves back in at a couple of places. Uh, there are other types uh, of, of shilt design uh, out there, and, and certainly um, it, it's a lot of personal preference. I really like the way a crown shield works, so that's why I got one uh, for my fader. Um, for this specific fader, I will note that there were some uh, errant hammer strikes uh, at the peen point, so there's some dents in the pommel. And that's something that it's a little bit disappointing to see, but it's okay because honestly it doesn't detract from the functionality of the sword, which of course is the main focus, and so that's what we're going to talk about next. This fader is ultra functional, and what I mean by that is that it is useful almost across the board in all standard HEMA practices, and that's not just you know, practicing the, the martial art itself, but also things like tournaments. Now, some of the, the features of a fader that really matter in, in the modern uh, HEMA society is keeping safety a priority. And so this sword has a really nice feature here at the tip um, in that it is uh, rounded just a bit, and that is meant to ensure that it doesn't pierce any protective equipment uh, like a face mask or uh, the, the padded gambeson. Um, also at the tip, it's much more flexible, and that's really the flexibility up through most of the week of the blade. Uh, that allows for the thrust to actually bend instead of poke or hurt or injure. And so that's a really good feature for your sparring partner. Now, the purpose of a fader's shield is actually to give some extra protection for the hand because instead of the blade hitting right down here near your fingers, it'll actually hit the shield and that actually keeps your hand more or less safe in most scenarios. Overall though, they, uh, the, this sword is kept very basic, and so it will function just like any basic longsword. And you could take this up against any uh, standard longsword that isn't a fader, although generally speaking in, in HEMA, you want to match like with like. Uh, in terms of sword quality as well as design. Because the fader has a very narrow blade, you don't want to take it up against the wide blade of maybe another type of longsword. So when you're using a fader, you'd want to use another fader. Also very important with this is the length of the grip and the handle because generally speaking many long swords have a much more uh, short grip compared to this one but you'll see this in a lot of HEMA weapons that they actually have a longer grip and most of that's actually for the purposes of gloves because when you're wearing gloves it gets very bulky very quickly and you don't have a lot of room on swords that have a much shorter grip so the extra long grip on this works really well for when you're wearing your protective equipment 
overall, like I said, it's a very functional sword. The steel is great. It's very well crafted. It has really nicely rounded edges and it ensures both your safety and the safety of your partner in as much as you can have when you're fighting with even blunt, blunted swords. So overall, the functionality sword is great and I really can't wait to use it more. I haven't had a chance to use it a lot. Uh, as you can see, there aren't a lot of nicks on the blade because it's relatively new. I only got this fairly recently. Um, but I will say overall, the grip is nice. Uh, it, it is done with a, a kind of a rope string and it's glued on there really well. Uh, the peen on the pommel uh, ensures really good uh, functional use that it won't get loose, it won't rattle. Uh, the overall construction is honestly as good as you would see on something like uh, an Albion sword. Although these aren't made the same way, uh, the construction is just as fine. And I am very, very fond of this fader. Now there are other faders out there that you can get that are not Regigny faders. Um, and there are only a few that will actually match the quality. Um, but overall, I think if you're going to go buy a fader for the purposes of HEMA, you might as well spend the right amount of money to get one that's going to last you a long time and also be very useful. Now, the one other thing I will say about uh, uh, this fader in terms of functionality has less to do with the sword itself and more about acceptance within HEMA as a, as a larger group, as a larger uh, community. And that is when you're uh, in a tournament, uh, they, they tend to have restrictions on what type of swords you can use uh, during a tournament. And the, the Regigny Fader is actually uh, almost across the board. In fact, I'm unaware of any tournament that doesn't allow it. And that's really important because there are faders out there made by various other companies that aren't actually allowed at many tournaments. And so you have to pay attention to that. You have to know what is a good fader to buy. And so from a functionality standpoint, that's just as important as construction because if you're not able to use it at an event like a tournament, um, it's not going to do you much good. So, uh, you know, the requirements for tournaments are based on how well the sword is made and, and for what purpose you're actually using it, in this case, to hit other people that are wearing protective equipment. And so, uh, the tournaments tend to, to err on the side of safety, and this is one of the most safe faders you can get for the purposes of HEMA and practicing and tournaments. So, really, really important to think about, make sure that when you're getting a fader that you are paying attention to uh, what the regulations at tournaments say. And like I said, the Regigny fader is almost across the board uh, allowed. Overall, there's not much more to say about this fader, though I will make a note about Regigny products in general, and that is because they are made in Hungary, they have good distribution throughout Europe, um, but they aren't necessarily as easy to source in the US. Thankfully, that's taken care of uh, for us by the fine people at HEMA Supplies. Now, I'm going to link uh, to their Facebook page in the description. They almost exclusively do, do their business uh, via Facebook and email, um, but they are extremely reliable, and they, uh, because they have many faders in stock, they actually ship very quickly. I believe I got mine within a week of having purchased it. Um, and I will make a general note about faders in general, and that is, that uh, if you're going to be serious about HEMA, you should really think pretty early about getting a fader uh, because there are a lot of options for training and sparring swords out there, synthetic, wooden, uh, all those things, but ultimately you're going to end up wanting to use steel at some point and you're going to want to participate in events like tournaments. Um, and so you're going to want to have one eventually. So start thinking about what fader you would like and kind of the details of, of what you think you would want in a fader. Um, but for the most part, you can't go wrong with a Regigny fader. There are other types out there that uh, match it. Um, but this one is one of the best that you can get, most certainly, without a doubt. Uh, so here it is, the Regigny Standard Fader. I give it a four and a half out of five.